Good afternoon and welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 641 and continuing with your thinking <laughs> started yesterday. The topic today is um, how to spot a dick and how to avoid them. Um, <laughs> I, I, I had to do it. Anyway, I'll get to, this, get to the details of what this is about in a moment. Before I get to, into the topic fully, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what I'm about. It's going to be a doozy today again. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I help women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which has inspired all my talks, in particular the talk today and yesterday, so bear with me. And for over two years now, I've done these talks called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. That's actually what the abbreviation MFTM is for in the front of the talks, in case you wondered. And today we're at episode, episode number 641. And the topic today is how to spot a dick. And as you know, how to find, how to, how to, how to, no, wasn't it? How to recognize a dick? That was better. Yeah, I was, I was, <laughs> I was going to put how to spot a dick. And I'm being English. If you, and there's an English uh, dessert called spotted dick. And I was like, that was too close together. So I had to, <laughs> how to identify a dick and how to avoid them. So I'm going to break this down because um, I did a talk yesterday um, at 640. I recommend you watch it if you didn't see it. That spoke to the... Um, Hi, Mary. That's, oh, you're identifying. Thank you, Mary. Identifying. Yes. Oh, by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, it was here on Facebook Live first. And so if you want to see the comments and everything interactively from what happened, you're going to find me on Facebook and I'll tell you about that at the end. So yesterday I did a topic which was, um, guys, please don't be a dick, which was in a way a, um, a referral back to talk I did about a year and a half ago which was, don't be a dick, it was a blunt one. It was actually my most visible or most uh, viewed Facebook Live ever so far, well over a thousand views. Actually, it was about 1800 at the time, which was kind of like, whoa. And I think it was the title that got people's attention. But I wanted to go deeper because there was so much on my plate yesterday. I was really kind of triggered yesterday. Exactly, but not that sort of, yeah. <laughs> it's almost that too. So Mary, you're in a way where you're ahead of me, but I'll talk about that as well, the narcissism, because that's part of the conversation. Excuse me. I should I should speak the comments for those people watching. Yes, go watch yesterday's talk. So this one's going to be particularly for the ladies how to avoid being accosted by one. And I don't mean what Evie put in the comments with the, the uh, <laughs> with the eggplant. That wasn't what I meant. I was talking about guys act like dicks. Let's be let's be clear about that, shall we? Although I've got a suspicion. I have a suspicion in this discussion there are going to be some women that might fit the ident these identifying characteristics as well. So. Be, be aware of that, be cautioned by that. So yesterday was basically the, ex <laughs> I was say the expression, the explosion of my disdain of how that was happening around where I go. It's like my spiritual center where I go on Sundays, which is Agape. I had a um, visceral, almost disgust about what happened there with some things that happened yesterday. And it's not the first time, it's actually, it's been perpetuated for a while now. So I thought today, yeah, there is a female flavor, yes. And it's and yeah. And it's not a swear word, it's actually a behavioral thing. So thank you, Evie, for the input, yes. And hi Evie, nice to see you on my broadcast too. And for all the loves, thanks for the hearts. I saw them popping up on the screen as I was introducing myself. So thank you. Um so let's jump into the topic, shall we? I already know that tomorrow's probably gonna be more about um more steps on how not to be a dick, so that'll be for the men. This one's for the ladies, how to spot one and avoid one. Because if, and I'm sure pretty much every woman watching this and every woman you know who may want to watch this, that's a hint by the way, has likely crossed paths with one or two in their lives. I doubt any woman on the planet who's straight, particularly, because sometimes gay women um, don't, even, don't, even, don't even enter the circles of dickishness that men bring forward, just because they know better, <laughs> in a way. Um, so that was a path I didn't plan to go to. Let me get back on track. All right. <laughs> so, today's is going to be some indications, tips, identifications, ideas, things that might get your attention when you meet a guy that maybe you should talk, maybe you should take to heart and take um, <laughs> direct flight from when you realize that one of the things is happening. So, let me just jump into this. So, first of all, there are the blatant dicks, and these are the ones that are. Hmm, prevalent everywhere. And the thing about it I want to speak to is that it seems strange somehow. I don't think I'm, I mean, maybe I'm this in, uh, tuned in and, 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 and psychic where I can pick it up more easily than women do, which I don't think is true. 
but when I see men that are acting like dicks where they're treating women callously, disrespectfully, diminish, demeaningly and everything else, women still hang out with them. And I haven't figured that one out. Well, I have ideas about that one. I'll make it to that one later. We'll see. But the first thing is, it's, some of the behavior is obvious. So one of the first things to be aware of is the way they do not see you. They just see your, see, see your, your, see your body, basically. Oh, Elizabeth, nice to see you broadcast. It's okay, you can watch it. You can watch it in replay. It's okay. I'm not going to change the content to now on replay. So, sorry in the bad, bad sell area. Yes. Thank you, Debbie. Yes, it's great. Well, yesterday was the first one, which was uh, gentle, uh, guys, stop being, di stop, uh, don't be a dick. So this is the next step, which is to have the women identify the dicks. And tomorrow will be, um, I think it's going to be for the men on how to be less of a dick. So this is a trip. Th this is a dick trilogy. <laughs> <coughs> By the way, by the way, my throat's getting better. It's not coughing so much. So hopefully, this will be a clearer uh, explanation. So we'll see how this goes. So first of all, behavior: overt, disrespectful, sexist, um, objectifying language. That's a first big clue because a lot of dicks. That's their only means of communication. But I want to talk to a couple of subtler ones because the problem is what you may not know. You may not know. Then again, you might. Is some men present as other than dicks, but end up being dicks. If you've been in a relationship with some of these, you know what I mean. I'm glad you love the title, Elizabeth. Thank you. So, the obvious things, again, are disregard and disrespect of you as a woman. Actually, disregard disrespect of all women. And a objectification and um, diminishment of women around them. And it's, it's tied to ego. It's definitely tied to ego. It may be tied to childhood stuff. I'm not going to get into the hows and whys of this stuff. But the bottom line is, if you're around a man who doesn't respect you, well, this is actually one of my, my uh, bylaws. <laughs> if, you, if you're around with a man who doesn't respect you, walk the fuck away. And I said that deliberately because so many women will put up with a lot more shit, a lot more crap than they really want to because somehow they think the man's salvageable. And he might be. You can't hear this? Oh, you can't hear this? Is it good? So, Leanne, I hope, well, people can hear me at least. I don't know if people can. So, Hopefully, to make sure I'm plugged in. Yeah, my mic's plugged in. Just making sure I was working okay. Um, but you can watch the replay, and the audio will be there then, definitely. So hopefully you'll get to be able to hear it so shortly, Leanne. So, again, bottom line, the base level of dickishness is disrespect and diminishment and objectification right off the bat. There are other levels of... Oh, you can. Good. Great, Leanne. I'm glad you can hear it. Gates. Wonderful. Welcome. And by the way, if you think that some people should watch this, please share it with them, <laughs> either live or in the replay. I'd appreciate that. Um, and yes, I do, involve, I do invite the comments, questions along the way. And if there's any questions about this sort of stuff, please put them in there so I can respond whilst I'm live. And if you do it after I finish the, the, the broadcast, I'll answer them in, in the replay myself as well, um, in the comments, that is. And again, if you're watching on YouTube, sorry, you're going to miss out on all the comments on Facebook Live, but I'll answer the comments there as well. So if you do get some thoughts about this one as, as we're going through, then please enter the enter comment please add comments and I'll respond in there as well and I'll put a link in the back if you want to contact reach out to me and contact me so I'll put that in the comments later on as well so back on track there are subtle levels of dickishness say that again. <laughs> it's so funny with certain words I say the uh, I have a um, what, Alexa device um, <laughs> she respond to things I didn't say anything but anyway so a, not, a high level, let me stay focused, please. A high level of dickishness that is very um, frustrating to me is, well, it's actually, it's, it's actually a little bit above the worst first one because the thing about it, you said at the beginning, is disrespect and disregarding and, and objectifying women. The other part is blatantly ignoring you. The thing I talk about, one of the biggest first steps for men to cure the, and I'll talk about this tomorrow more detailed, their dickish behavior is just to be acting like a gentleman. Open the door, help them with a coat, do sort of things like that. When man does that, it changes his energetic. Not a lot, but it's a start. Again, it's not, it's not the final. So ladies, if a man doesn't help you with any sort of stuff like that, doesn't open the door for you, doesn't help you, doesn't help you get seated, doesn't help you with a coat, doesn't take care of you when you're together, that's another clue of a dickish behavior. And another reason why you might want to think about considering a different relationship or a different person because they're not doing they're not supporting you the way you desire need or deserve so that's the next level up so blatant disregard first or I should say objectification and 
um, belittlement first, ignoring it, ignoring you second because it is ignoring you, and third is to um, I was gonna say pity you, but that's the nice kind of what I mean. When 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 guys talk to women about how they f when they when they say to you, "Oh, I feel for you. I know how hard it is for you being a woman, and I'm so sorry for what's happening to you." Ninety percent of the time, that's crap. Because <laughs> I'm gonna piss off some people with this one. Because I know a lot of women out there have been wanting men to be kind to them, but the reality is for me is what it is. Women need to be. Women need to know they already deserve the best. They already are honoured. They already are standing up. Because the reality of a lot of this dickish behaviour is that men use it to still keep women suppressed. It's like let's be nice to them, but keep them pushed down. And that is that's a whole societal issue we're dealing with, and we're going to change that soon. I trust it's starting to show up in different areas in political arenas. But also needs to happen in the media and happens in social circles and in spiritual circles everywhere as well. And that's coming. So that's the third level in a way, because it's the next level up of subtlety, or I should say the more invisible, kind of, sort of, um, dickish behavior, because it's wrapped in kindness, but it's still egotistically driven, one upmanship, and demeaning. And seeing, if you can see the progression on this one. So let me see if there's a fourth one, because I because I'm I I don't have a script by the way, in case you haven't realized this, I don't have a script. And I didn't rehearse this beforehand, so I don't know if there's a th a fourth, fifth, or sixth layer. I just know that I got one out of the way, and then a the second showed up, and now a third. Let's see if there's a fourth, shall we? <laughs> You're on this adventure with me, and I'm I'm totally at the beginning of the uh, totally in, in place of exploration as well. So and if you got some ideas as well, please put them out. I I'll happily see if they fit into the paradigm I'm creating here. Um Hang on, I'm going to see if it shows up because it's one of these ones that's going. It, it doesn't quite fit yet, because the thing is, I, I don't want because I know I can wander into the other side very easily now because I'm on that place where the subtlety of dickishness is such they can slide into pretending to be okay, to be, to be a nice guy, to be a gentleman, to be respectful. Does that fit there? Okay, I'm going to play this one out and see if this fits. So bear with me because it might not fit though. It might. It might. So this is not a rule. But the, if the, but the effects of this behavior that I'm going to talk about is basically dickish. So, it does, so in a way, it does for me count this way, because I was this a while ago in my earlier relationships. Um, well, OK, let me think. Do I want to do that one first? I'm going to try this one as an experiment first. I've already got another one showing up, so I've got now four and five. <laughs> That's the way this works. So the one that showed up right away is the man who are super nice but have no, <laughs> present no dick, <laughs> in the sense of they don't have a, a sexual energy. They're just nice guys holding back and being, being, being polite. But it's almost like they, they don't want to offend. And it's that indecisiveness and that holding back that puts them in the same category in a way because what's happening is you're not being met by a man who deserves you. And most men who don't deserve you kind of are dicks. <laughs> just to be inclusive, to make this a very very inclusive perspective. So that's, that was the fourth one which I'm playing with. It might not fit or not, we'll see. And if you think it does or not, let me know. The sixth one, though, is... Um, well, it was uh, two pieces came through at once. Hang on. So one of them is blame. Oh, yeah. Okay, that one's going to fit. All right, so another, one, another aspect of a um, dick is constantly making you wrong and blaming you. I didn't cover the early one, so this must be yeah. All right, so this is number this is number five, five. So this is definitely one of the most. My home, but let me back up a second. This will be one of the most annoying ones because it doesn't start that way. This is one of these dickish things. It starts out all nice and understanding and accepting, and he's going great, and he moves forward th things along. But as you get into the relationship, get into that arrangement, if it's a business partnership, whatever it is, the blame game begins. It starts subtly, but then it becomes up and up and up, so that you're in a place. You're in a place ultimately where you can do nothing right. That his continual barrage of insults and de and and denials and belittlement is making life suck. And some men, excuse me, some men play nice at the beginning to get you in, and then they just treat you like shit afterwards. This one. Um, <laughs> yes, this one um, 
even as we talked about at the beginning, is a, is a reversal one. This one works both from men to women and from women to men. This one particularly does have a double-edged sword to it. So you may know some ladies like that who treat the men like that. And either way, whoever's the recipient of that one is, I'd say, walk the F away as soon as you can because it's not going to help you. All right, so that was number six. I had another one. I think it was circling around. <laughs> This is the fun about doing these talks, is stuff shows up and then it just hovers here for a bit and if I don't catch it, it's like, it disappears. <sighs> Come inside my mind, it's crazy in here sometimes, to quote Robin Williams from years ago. So, the, I guess the overarching thing I want to talk about here, just to summarize and bring it together, is dickish behavior has a spectrum, as you can tell. And it starts with the blatant to the subtle. The ultimate piece of it all though, Every single one of those things, first of all, it puts you in a place of missing out on what you really want. Secondly, it's a, form, it's a form of ego manipulation on any different level of that. So from, again, from blatant to subtle, the ego manipulation is in the mix. So my suggestion for you ladies particularly is don't always trust too easily. Let me put it that simply because Ladies, I, I know you are smart enough. I know you have the intuition, but sometimes you um, close the door on it because he looks really good or he's got a nice car or he treated you really nice for a weekend. However, looks can be very deceptive as you may have already discovered in life if you're someone who's over 20. Because <laughs> for many of us, we've learned to our um, detriment that is perfect at the beginning doesn't last that way and you know there's 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 a comment I one of my friends said I'm going to switch around for a second so bear with me as I change completely the, the framework is no actually I'll flip it the other way so it does fit all right so for example there are gorgeous celebrity men in Hollywood I'm not gonna name any names you pick the ones you like ladies <laughs> doesn't matter how amazing good looking how much they may look wonderful they may have in their closets their, their history a bad breakup with a woman where they were the dick to them you don't know for sure but I'm just saying is what I'm saying in this point is to make sure you get the point that it has to go beyond looks if you want to find a man who's not a dick you need to really find out for yourself the good news is with the blatant ones you know within the first two seconds uh, no thank you and you're out but some of the subtler levels, as I mentioned, up to the level five and six, I think I covered five and six, then it takes time to discover. But keep your purse in your hand and your keys with you, so to speak. Don't commit and jump in all the way. Thank you, they've been tracking me, nice. So dis disrespect, disregard, objectification, kindly, dis dis kindly discondescending, belittlement on the edge of your seat with this. this is good. <laughs> Thank you, Leanne. Well, a lot of my work with my clients is to help them become better at choosing. And a lot of that is also self-review. Because so the thing about this, and, and that list you put up there, thank you. Yeah, I've got to drop this one in there, okay. I've talked over the last, I've talked a lot over the last several weeks on this topic as well, is how we are pre-wired to, or predisposed to have certain experiences in relationships. And so all the things you listed if you're attracting relationships like that, and this is for everybody, by the way, but what Leanne said, a disrespect, disregard, objectification, kindly condescending, belittlement, all those things. If you're experiencing that in your relationships and it's happened more than once, as in more than one relationship, it's highly possible, highly possible that the first time this happened wasn't with a relationship, with a, sorry, with a partnership, it's with a parent. So if this is something that you're repeating in a cycle, we definitely need to talk because I can help you resolve your paradigm so you don't keep repeating that anymore and you can choose more high level. Getting back to the main focus, the focus, or should say the awareness and um, I can say this, the awareness and the view of seeing how there is subtler layers of um, dickishness <laughs> to get back to that again, it really takes a refined sense of awareness and a, and a, a better dick detector, so to speak, and that could be that could come out wrong totally, yeah. 
But having that sort of behavior detection, <laughs> I'll rephrase that slightly, can save you a lot of grief, a lot of pain, a lot of aggravation. I'll talk tomorrow about how men can be more um, authentic and less dickish. Not that that's the spectrum, but it's in there somewhere. But if you haven't seen yesterday's broadcast, I do invite you to go back and watch that one again, by the way, because that was really what, my, what started this rant. This one's a bit more contained. <laughs> yesterday was really pissed, kind of pissed off, which doesn't happen often, but I was just really need to talk about it. So today's a bit of a viewpoint, hopefully an encouragement for women that there are good men out there. Let me, well, sorry, let me, let me back up a second. I should have said this at the beginning. Ladies, there are some good men out there, but there are also some dicks amongst the men. And I don't mean that physic and anatomically, I mean that as an energetic. So if you are a woman who's been facing, meeting too many dicks and not enough real men, here's hope in this, in this conversation. And if you want to go deeper, I'll put, the, you know, I'll put a link in the comments and reach out to me. So I think that's pretty much, that, that's all the piece I was going to bring. So I, had, I guess that was six layers. So I appreciate you being in the conversation because this is something that um, it's a paradigm shift that I want to help create. I, I've talked about this before that I'm really feeling myself moving more in towards feminine empowerment, feminine, feminine inspiration. Part of that's going to be changing the culture, the way men and women relate, which is no small task. But I'm definitely feeling this desire, this need, this, this um, calling to respect women, honor women, remind them of who they are so they don't attract the sort of bullshit behavior that I was talking about yesterday. But also I know my work, maybe the harder work, which is to dig in deeper and to wake the men up that want to be woken. Because the problem with this also is those men who are dicks, either one, don't think they are, or two, take pride in it. And either way, they aren't going to change. I should take it back. The ones who are not aware that they're dicks often will be surprised when they find out and then they want to learn. So. The ones who are proud of it, there's not much I can do about that. However, ladies, there is something you can do, which is keep the F away. To take care of yourself, to respect yourself, and never fall in the trap of a nice looking package when you find that the content is rotten. I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday, actually, at, at Agape, and we were talking about relationships and, par and, and challenges, and talking about how, and I, met, I mentioned Lisa Nichols' quote, which I love this quote, about how relationships are often gift, uh, gifts wrapped in sandpaper. It's a wonderful gift, a wonderful quote rather. And it's so visceral because it really speaks to that place where you sometimes use relationships where you think it's great, but all this, all this friction's in the way, all this challenge's in the way. Ah, Leanne, question. So when you, have, when you, so when you identify you have encountered a dick, it, it's important to share this observation or run. Oh, I just answered it. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks for asking the question. I'm glad I answered it before you asked it. That's a, by the way, it's a timing thing with this because it's about, I think, 30 seconds after you type a question that I'll see it on the screen. So you're seeing my response to that even later than that. So yeah, okay, so <laughs> you're very welcome. So Leanne, if you want to help reach out to me, I'll put a link in the comments for that too. Um, my, the, the juice on this has sort of just ended, so I'm just seeing something else I want to tie this knot together at the end to, to wrap it up. Bottom line is this, is that there are good men out there there are also a hell of a lot of dicks out there too. And a lot of these dicks are in the middle of or post midlife crisis. Oftentimes they are divorced. I'm not saying these are the, these are not the, not the demographics exactly, but a lot of them are because they didn't know how to hold a relationship. They don't always have to be. Sometimes they've been in many relationships and they haven't had one last. Um, oh, back to the beginning, to about narcissism, because that's in there too. The I'm going to do a very, very short Cliff Notes version of this because narciss narcissism is a much bigger topic than I can cover in this talk because it's actually a section of the DSM-5. So it's a very potent piece of um, understanding about how men and women do this, by the way, because narcissism, narcissism is not a gender-based theme. It works on both sides. So when a, so as I'm talking to the ladies about this, when a man is an, a narcissist, he will do what I said earlier, whereas he will be charming and sweet and inviting and kind and treat you like gold until he has you in a relationship. And then you get, then you, once you're secure in that relationship, then you get trodden down. It's not dickish, it's abusive. It's much worse than, than dickish for me because the narcissism, narcissist is an abusive partner who lives to drain your energy for themselves. It's, I call it, I, I sometimes call them an energy vampire because what they, they're actually doing is making sure, because they, they, they go for somebody who they think is really good 
really high, really strong, really powerful, really exciting, because they think the more amazing that person is, the more energy they can suck from them. I'm using those terms intentionally to scare you. Narcissists are a real challenge, and they, frankly, 90% of them can't be helped. But once you escape one, keep running. And I would, I would mark in your diary a mark in the ground a reminder of what that was like so you don't have it happen again. Anyway, that, that was a very short talk about narcissism, but it's part of the dickish screen, range, I guess. I guess you would put it this way, that, that that's the higher level, was the highest level of dickishness, and there are some men in this conversation who live there. As I said before, and talking to Eva about this, Evie about this, there are also um, women who run the narcissistic spectrum too. So a couple of the ones I talked about are on both sides of the gen gender divide. They're not just about men, but most of this talk has been that way. So I think that's got everything out. I'm finding myself not having any clarity of what's next, which is usually a sign that I'm done with my talk. Um, I will put links in the comments, two links in the comments, one for a contact form if you want to reach out with just a chat. I also put a link in the comment for a discovery session if you really want to get some relationship help and maybe you've had too many dicks in your life, and I don't mean that anatomically again. You treat, you've been mistreated by men too many times, there'll be a link in the comments for a discovery session with me as well. So that's those two. Um, replays. This is my Facebook Live, as I mentioned, 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page every day, seven days a week, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go onto my business page and also into YouTube and also my podcast, and I'll give you the links for those just so you know where they are. So again, replays on my business page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. And you watch yesterday's broadcast will be there. It's also my personal page, but it's got other stuff in between. And again, I do recommend if you saw if you didn't see yesterday's broadcast, please watch yesterday's. Thank you, Leanne. I appreciate that. And thank you, Mary. Appreciate that as well. Um, well, the thing is, this is my video blog. I don't do writing blogs anymore. I mean, after I wrote my book, I stopped writing at that time. So this is this could be transcribed into a blog post, perhaps. But definitely, as a video, it's more <laughs> more alive, so to speak. But thank you for that. I appreciate the feedback, Leanne. Um, and thank you, Mary, for joining me. So, business page, personal page, YouTube. If you, watch, if you haven't watched them on YouTube, I do save them over there. And if you're watching on YouTube, this is where you probably found me. Um, my channel on, on YouTube is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. You can watch all of my broadcasts in there. And finally, I do have a podcast where some of my earlier talks have been posted. On iTunes, it's called Messages from the Masculine, and you can subscribe to my uh, podcast and download the audio versions of my early talks. So with that, if any questions, let me know. Put me in the comments below. Again, I'll put links in the comments for a discovery session and a chat. Um, sorry, a contact form. And um, just be careful out there. Choose carefully. Keep your wits, wits about you. Trust your intuition. And really, don't jump blindly. I guess the best thing to say. Again, if you want help, you know where to find me. And if you have any thoughts about this topic or you get some additional points about what dickish behavior is, I invite you to put that in the comments as well. And again, share this with anybody you think should see this. It might just change their lives. So thanks for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.